Welcome to the Amy's Taxidermy YouTube channel. Today we are going to be creating a custom habitat scene for a bobcat. This scene is supposed to recreate a trapping scene as the bobcat approaches the trap. I used some photos from a client that he provided himself. He wants a very specific scene recreated. And if you take a look at the photos, you can kind of see uh, what it is we're going for, what I'm trying to achieve. The client explained to me that a hole is dug into the ground that contains lure or a piece of meat that will attract the animal. Then you surround it with grasses as well as covering the trap with grass so as not to tip the animal off to the trap underneath. Here are the products we are going to use today. Two part urethane foam, side A and B. This is your expandable foam that builds up the height of the base. This is very messy. Uh, the bottle is messy, so you can't read it, but this is called um, So Strong Colorant. It's by Smooth On, and I use both black and brown colors. You add this to your foam, and instead of rising into a yellow color, it's going to look brownish, black, whatever you know color you want, and that's going to give you a great base colorant for your habitat scene. This may look like plain old dirt. This is called Eco Earth. It's coconut fiber bedding. It's meant for reptile cages. And you can get this at PetSmart or a lot of other uh, pet stores. Some fall leaves. I collect these in the fall when they're at their best and dry them out. So these are good and crunchy. As well as uh, some moss and also dried grasses that I've collected from the yard. Let's get started. Uh, we are sizing it down just a little bit, um, putting the trap a little closer to the hole than, say, it might have been in real life, just because we are trying to keep this um, habitat piece from overwhelming the cat. But uh, I'm going to show you how I'm going to assemble this custom scene using some foam and dirt and natural materials. Let's remove these pieces. I've got two-part urethane foam here, two-part foam with some brown colorant in the foam. At this point, I have to switch to a voiceover recording because I put a respirator mask on for this part. These two-part foams can emit a really harmful fume, so when you're working with these foams, especially in a little bit larger quantity like this is, I like to wear a mask. You can't really smell it, which is why it's so dangerous. It's an uh, odorless fume. So as it rises, I'm working it around the base. You have about one minute tops to really work with this stuff, so be prepared to work fast. Right about this time, it's starting to be really sticky, and I'm going to take some of this Eco Earth dirt and put it all over. I'll put it on really heavily because later I can dust it off and actually retrieve the excess using the bag I have underneath, and I'll be able to pour that back into my container and not waste it. While the foam is still kind of setting up and a little bit soft, I'll set that trap in place, and here I go kind of forming the start of that hole that's going to be in front of the trap. The foam is still soft, so I'm just pulling it right off and creating a basic hole in the scene and giving that trap a footprint into the foam so it'll set in. Walking on it works pretty good at this point. It's still a little bit of soft, so I'll put some pressure on it. I just want to kind of have a deep well there to accept the trap. Now I'm going to spray it with some dark brown spray paint because I just want to give it a little bit darker color and cover up some spots that might not have gotten completely covered with the dirt. This will give it more of a overall dark brown. And I'm also putting an extra good bit down in that hole because I want it to look, you know, 
darker and deeper down inside that trap hole. I hope you can see how this is really giving it some texture. It's not all one color now. It looks like the texture of the dirt and the natural earth. Now I'm getting ready to mix up a little bit more foam here, just a very small cup, uh, but I kind of want to build up the area around the hole and make that a little bit deeper. Now it's risen enough for me to apply all around. And the nice thing about tinting it brown is that it really blends in well. You can build upon your existing scene and it's going to uh, blend in with just a little more of that dirt. You won't be able to see a seam. Now I'm going to take some heavy duty spray adhesive and spray it around the entire base and give that about 30 seconds to tack up. It'll be more sticky if you don't apply your uh, items right away, but I want to have it look like some leaf litter on here. So I just have dried leaves that I collected in the fall and dried out and I'm crunching them all over the base here. And they will stick to that spray adhesive. This part is kind of fun. And with habitat work, you just want to build textures, you know, don't try to add everything at once. You see we did dirt, then we did leaves now i'm adding some more spray adhesive and now i'm going to take some grasses and crunch these dried grasses over which is gonna you know add just another level of detail and a different item to the scene this is supposed to kind of look like a field um, the edge of a field you might say Let's add in one more layer. Now I'm doing moss, just some uh, dried green moss, and I'm shredding that all over the base. I really like working with moss. It looks good on just about any woodland scene, or in this case, uh, edge of the woods field scene. And now I'm going to set the trap kind of where it's supposed to go and from here we're going to be recreating that part of the scene where the hay is around that hole the purpose of the hole would be to hold some bait or perhaps scent that would attract the animal and it would be partially covered by hay or straw the trap itself would also be covered with some hay so that the cat or whatever animal you're targeting wouldn't be able to immediately see the trap. But in the case of this scene, we are gonna leave it exposed so that you can see the trap. So that might not be 100% accurate, but we wanna be able to see the trap. But I'm just sitting this hay kind of around the hole, and then I'm going to lightly spray some spray adhesive on it to help all that grass hold together. So here is the finished piece in place. We have the cat approaching the trap and I actually have the gaze of the cat looking at that hole. We actually don't want him looking at the trap. In fact, in real life, um, this trap would not be exposed so the cat would not um, be tipped off by the trap. So. Possibly once the client gets this, I've left some extra grass so that he can cover this trap. We want to be able to see it just a little bit for purposes of this piece. Um, we don't want to hide it entirely. Otherwise, what's the point of even putting the trap there? But I've left the option of, of him kind of lightly covering it with some grass like it would be actually in real life. It would be covered up under that grass. But for now, I'm going to leave it exposed. So we can see that. So he's approaching the hole, which would have some bait or some lure in it. 
He's just about to step on the pan. And you can see all the details that I put into here. I think this piece has great flow from the shape of the base. It complements the cat and the direction of the head. I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I created this. It's very easy with natural materials and two-part urethane foam to create just about anything you want. And I think habitat creation is one of the most fun parts of taxidermy. You can really get creative with it. So I hope this client loves it. I hope you think I've pulled it off pretty well. And uh, if you like this video, let me know and I will post more habitat creations in the future.